Well, last week I watched Jennifer's Body, which was put forward as a feminist horror classic, but for me personally, it is exactly what the critical response and marketing described it as, an unfunny and unscary horror comedy aimed at 15-year-old boys who like Megan Fox, although it does have some genuine feminist takes that can be applied to it. Whilst watching, I couldn't help but think to myself, well, it's no ginger snaps a genuine feminist horror cult classic in my mind. So let's take a look back at Ginger Snaps. Which is a 2000 Canadian body horror directed by John Fawcett and written by Karen Walton, where we follow two outcast sisters, Ginger, Catherine Isabel, and Bridget, Emily Perkins. On the night of Ginger's first period, she is savagely attacked by a wild creature. Ginger's wounds miraculously heal, but something's not quite right. I want to try and answer two questions again this week. Why is this a better feminist horror than Jennifer's body? And why, if it is so great, did it end up straight to DVD? Let's tackle the feminist bona fides first. Ginger Snaps is a story of a girl who is bitten by a lycanthrope and turns into a werewolf on the very night she has her first period. The entire narrative is a metaphor for puberty and the changes the female body and mind goes through as a result. At the beginning, Ginger and Bridget are both deaf-obsessed, angsty teens who have a deep sisterly bond as seen with their suicide blood oath pact. It's the pact. We swore we'd go together one way or another. Out by 16 or dead in the scene, but together forever. Both eschewing boys and what they call the normies. That is until Ginger receives, in her own words, the curse. Or in other words, she starts menstruation. It is at this exact point she's attacked by a lycanthrope and starts experiencing fundamental changes to her attitude and body. Firstly, she starts growing hair in all of the wrong places. Then she starts sucking the face of boys constantly, and taking drugs, and rejecting her close bonds to her devoted sister. She starts having strong sexual needs that are heavily linked in the film to the need for eating, basically saying it's as normal to want sex as a female as it is to eat. Okay, Ginger eats actual humans and even goes as far as to raw dog a typical horny misogynistic teen boy in the back of a Volvo, which leads to him getting a nasty dose of pissing blood. In other words, he also catches the curse of having a period, as he too changes into a werewolf. He gets a small taste of what it is to be like a woman. Ginger Snaps takes all of these fairly normal changes that every female goes through and makes them empowering. Ginger accepts them, she begins to own herself and her sexuality and her confidence skyrockets as a result. This is wonderfully contrasted to the still awkward, weird and delightfully besotted young sister Bridget. Brilliantly played by Emily Perkins, who is in fact two years older than her co-star and was 20 at the time, but is still very believable as the younger sister. As is Catherine Isabel as Ginger. She looks entirely believable as both an emo social outcast and as a more confident, attractive, lycanthrope version of herself. They clearly have genuine on-screen chemistry between each other, which really sells the fact they are very, very close sisters. Contrast that to Jennifer's body, where Morgan Fox, whose acting is miraculously the best thing about that film, and Amanda Seyfried just look like exactly what they are. 25-year-old Hollywood actresses playing teenage girls. Although I could think of various feminist prisms that you could view Jennifer's body through, none of them except one were actually part of the storyline. Whereas the feminism in Ginger Snaps is intrinsic to the narrative, you can't remove it from the story and the story remain the same. The story is intrinsically a feminine one, but at the same time entirely relatable to both sexes. We all go through puberty, we've all experienced the uncomfortable and scary bodily and emotional changes that it brings, along with the awkward conversations with your parents or school counsellors. Also Ginger Snaps doesn't have any of this. which still to me purely exists to appeal to horny 15 year old boys. Which brings us to the horror of Ginger Snaps. Unlike Jennifer's body, which is essentially a PG-13 with a few too many swears, 
This is a genuine R-rated body horror, with hints of Cronenbergian genius within the metamorphosis from human to lycanthrope. But even more than that, the body horror is linked to the feminist narrative in a clear and obvious way. The changes that lycanthropy causes in Ginger are very similar to the ones that are caused during actual human female puberty, going as far as to it be even linked to a monthly lunar cycle rather like a female's menstrual one, and brings transformations in mood, sexual appetite and aggression, a bit like puberty. The effects are also practical, Catherine Isabel had to spend 9 hours getting the prosthetics applied and removed each day. I always appreciate practical over CG effects, I just think they age way better, especially with body horror, it just looks more realistic and horrifying. My monkey brain knows that this is CGI, and that tail she is growing is somewhat real. It also comes with lots and lots of gore and blood, and a werewolf being shredded by a van, well, which is always cool. I can hear you thinking, why then did this utterly brilliant horror fail so miserably? Easy answer, politics and cancel culture. Yeah, turns out that isn't exactly new. Let me explain. Even before the film started production, a group of Canadian casting directors refused to even cast the film as they were appalled by the horror, the gore and the language, so pretty much the entire film. Even when one did agree to take on the film, school shootings at Columbine and one in Alberta brought a round of media outrage directed at the not even in production yet film, as it was partly funded by Telefilm, a Canadian federal government film funding agency. With the Toronto Star, Pearl clutching about the government essentially funding teen slasher movies and demanding it was cancelled. Thankfully the movie did go ahead, but its troubles did not stop there. After premiering at the Munich Film Festival, it went on to make a fairly major splash at the 2000 Toronto International Film Festival, receiving a lot of positive media coverage after the extremely positive word of mouth from Munich, even attracting the attention of some major US distribution companies who then, much like the Canadian filmmaking community, balked at the R-rated violence and instantly dropped their interest. The film was essentially left for dead. Going straight to DVD in the US, it did get a limited traditional release in Canada, however lasting an entire week before being replaced by The Mummy Returns in theatres. And were it not for a stroke of luck, that is probably where this story would end. However, in John Fawcett's own words, he received a call from an enthusiastic theatre owner from New York. I wish I knew who it was, because he is a really cool part of the story. He owned a little rep theatre in New York City, and he had been to TIFF, and he really liked Ginger Snaps. He said, I'm working on my Halloween slate of movies, and I really want to show Ginger Snaps. Who is your US distributor? I said, you're talking to him. If you want a print, don't go to them because they are just going to give you the runaround. I've got a print of it, if you pay for all the shipping you can show it and make whatever you can make and try to get as many people to see it as possible and good luck. And then I just forgot about it. As it turns out, Dave Keller, a New York Times reviewer, happened to see the movie and wrote a passionate review for it, with the film even making the cover of the New York Times entertainment section, with HBO then picking it up a week later due to this. As John Fawcett has said about that, it was HBO that picked it up and played the shit out of it, and that was really where our North American audience started. Whatever the Ginger Snaps movie became, it was because people saw it on HBO. And that is how and why this brilliant movie was almost never made, then left for dead, but somehow found cult fandom on TV and home video. Going on to be so successful in those mediums, it was enough to get a sequel and prequel funded. These were both filmed back to back and released in 2004. The sequel, Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed, follows Bridget and her struggles with controlling her lycanthropy. It isn't as thematically rich as the first, but has a wonderful creepy vibe, with yet more brilliant body horror. Emily Price and Tatiana Maslany are both brilliant in the lead roles also. The ending is nihilistic as all hell, something that always appeals to me for some strange reason, so if you enjoy the first movie, you'll really enjoy this one. 
Ginger Snaps Bites Back The Beginning is the third movie in the Ginger Snaps trilogy and as the title suggests, it is a prequel set in 1815. Unsurprising really because they had to work some way of getting Catherine Isabel back as a main character. She briefly appears in the sequel as Bidgins within Bridget's mind but is probably on screen for less than 3 minutes in total. Essentially a rehash of the first movie with none of its wit, charm, metaphors or me enjoying it. It did however remind me that Ravenous exists, which I had somehow in my mind combined with this film. I don't recommend this one for anyone but the hardcore completionists. So that was Ginger Snaps, a film that combines body horror, a feminist narrative and two brilliant acting turns to create what is genuinely one of my favourite movies of all time that I've owned on DVD for nearly 20 years at this point and have regularly watched throughout that time. If you haven't seen this one you really should track it down and watch it. Like, comment and subscribe and all that I guess. Next week is another incredibly obscure 80s film, so I hope you'll join me to see what that one is. It's a pretty good one, it's got a banging soundtrack. If you like 80s synth, then this movie's for you.